to this video on how the adult brain learns, I will review recent research in the fields of neuroscience, psychology, and education. It is a widely held belief that once we reach adulthood, we become too set in our ways to change our thoughts, beliefs, and behaviors. However, research has proven that adult brains continue to learn throughout one's lifetime with more emphasis on developing wisdom rather than memorizing lists and multiplication tables. By understanding the unique ways in which adults learn, we can enhance our own learning and success at work and school. We can design more effective training programs, improve the performance of employees, and increase business success. This video is ideal for individuals who are attending college or university for the first or second time and want to understand exactly how the brain learns and what is necessary to make learning stick in the brain. It may also be helpful to university students or college students who are studying education, particularly those interested in adult education in academic, corporate, or government settings. While there is no set definition of what age an individual enters adult education, the ideas presented in this book may be relevant to any students over the age of 18. You don't need any prior knowledge of neuroscience or adult learning theories to get value out of this lecture. So please enjoy. During this video series, I will introduce you to the anatomy of the adult brain by describing some of the basic areas of the brain and the functions that they manage. I will also share with you how the brain grows or wires itself for learning, and we will discuss how different emotions impact our brain as well as our learning. For example, how does fear and stress change how we learn? Finally, I will finish the series by discussing how neuroscience is informing the field of adult education and share with you some tips you can use to improve your own learning or if you are an educator, enhance your instructional style to make learning more effective for adults. Let's start by taking a look at the anatomy of the brain. When adults return to school or try to learn a new skill or language later in life, they often complain of how challenging it is to learn at an older age. These experiences may have led to the development of the myth that as humans, we stop learning after a certain age. The old adage of it's all downhill from here is believed by many to apply to learning as well as life in general. It is a belief that the human brain is unable to learn new things once, once we finish our traditional schooling. However, there are always stories that contradict this belief when we see senior citizens returning to university to, to complete a degree, picking up a new career as a yoga instructor, or starting to campaign in politics. The reality is that all of us have the opportunity to continue learning and growing well into our senior years, but we must continue to utilize and challenge our brain in order to do so. Researchers now know that the brain is like many of the other muscles in our body and through repeated exercises, it can continue to evolve and grow regardless of our age. The key is to recognize how to exercise the brain properly to achieve the desired results. This video is an introduction to how the adult brain may continue to grow and change later in life with practical tips for studying, learning, and teaching. It is easy for us to take the human brain for granted trusting that it will continue to work and learn effectively. However, when we look closely at the brain, it is not as simple as we might first think. The brain is the force of life for the rest of the body by controlling all of our automatic bodily functions, like breathing and heart rate, as well as all of our movements, thoughts, and actions. Without a functioning brain, we are dead. The most interesting thing about the brain is not the individual components that control different aspects of our being and abilities, but rather how all of the different parts of the brain are connected through a vast and complex communication system. The brain could be said to act like our own personal version of the internet. It connects our thoughts, knowledge, and experiences in detailed webs or filing systems. When we learn new knowledge, read a book, visit a new place, or have a new experience, it searches through the filing system, similar how we search for keywords in search engines, and pulls up what it already knows about a given topic or experience. The brain then links the new knowledge to our existing knowledge for easy retrieval in the future. This process is one of the ways of how our brain learns. 
One of the ways in which we can look at the brain is by considering some of the main areas known as lobes. While all areas of the brain play a role in learning, this section is going to focus on some of the primary areas to give you a foundational understanding. The oldest part of the brain, from an evolutionary perspective, is the brain stem. Located at the base of the brain, it forms a connection with the spine and the nervous system throughout the body. It is responsible for keeping the body alive by ensuring that the heart continues to pump, the blood flows through the body, the lungs are breathing in oxygen, the stomach is digesting food, and all the other functions of the body that are required for survival. The best thing about the brainstem is that it takes care of all of the routine work of the body without us having to give much thought to it. As we work our way up from the brainstem, we move into the limbic system. The limbic system works with the brainstem to control the automatic responses of the body, but it is also responsible for managing emotions. One of the critical components of the limbic system is the amygdala, which is responsible for integrating sensory input from the sights and sounds we see and hear with our emotions. This integration has been important to our survival as a human race and is often referred to as the fight or flight response. When we are faced with potentially threatening situations such as a bear approaching us or an angry boss, the amygdala takes control of our thinking and quickly determines whether we should flee the scene or stay and fight. This amygdala hijack is an important function for our safety and survival, especially during the early stages of evolution. But in modern times, it can actually be a detriment by stealing resources from other parts of the brain that are necessary for logical and executive thinking. When we experience an amygdala hijack, we may find it more challenging to think logically and respond calmly. From there, the brain moves into the temporal lobes in the middle of the brain, which is the center for hearing, language, and memory. The temporal lobe is responsible for processing auditory information received through the ear. One of the other interesting areas of the brain is the parietal lobe, which processes sensory information from other parts of our brain, such as sight, sound, and touch, and controls our motor processes. For example, when you feel an itch, warmth, or cold, this part of your brain is activated and may result in you scratching your itch or removing your hand from a warm oven or a cold block of ice. Behind the parietal lobe lies the occipital lobe, which receives and processes sensory information received from our sense of sight. And the newest part of the brain, from an evolution and development perspective, is the frontal lobe. The frontal lobe lies just behind the forehead and contains the prefrontal cortex, which is the part of the brain that controls logic, executive thinking, planning, and reasoning. It is the part of the brain that allows adults to take a step back from a challenging situation and think it through logically before responding.